Get ready for one of the most epic plane vs SPA battles we've done yet where our subscribers have highly voted on a scenario of taking F-2222 bombers only carrying a load of GAM-MN-50 with 52 bombs versus a scenario of World War II 3.0 or lower battle rating anti-air vehicles. We put our contestants in to demonstrate the chaos along with a bonus night round of any World War II bomber against Cold War and prior SPAAs. Will the chaos be what we'd expect? Today, we find out. Three rounds will be done, plus our bonus night round, where our first round we do 20 bombers versus 35 3.0 BR or lower anti-air, where our contestants and bombers can only fly 500 meters high. Then depending on how round one goes, we may add more anti-air or bombers, or allowing bombers to fly 750 meters. And then in round three, we'll add more anti-air or allow bombers to fly 1,000 meters high to see what the outcome will be. Let's see how round one goes. Bombers coming in hot and ready as they line up their drops, while anti-air has already been continually firing what they can to reach the approaching wave before the first drop happens. Between all 20 bombers carrying 52 bombs each, there's about 1,040 bombs ready to be released while the anti-air braces itself for the oncoming impact. Being ready to release the first bombs while taking aim on what the bombers can see from the mini flashes below. Will 500 meters and 1,040 bombs be what it takes for them to defeat their greatest threats below? So many rounds being shot up in the sky, some of the bombs even end up getting hit, causing them to explode mid-air. What a crazy first carpet bombing run by the first half of the bombers taking out eight of the anti-air already while the second half follows close behind. Two bombers down while many try to pull out from the spray of ammo around them. F-2222 doesn't have great speed making them vulnerable to the shower of bullets they're taking at their altitude, but many are still able to restock for more drops to come back for more. Almost three minutes into the battle with nine anti-air out and five bombers down. Getting ripped to shreds, the bomber team is having a difficult time eliminating their targets, but do everything they can to try and pull a victory given their limitations. Ha <laughs> ha 
and I love seeing all the anti-air flip around everywhere as the bombs drop close by, shooting them in so many different directions, I think it made our contestants disoriented sometimes. minutes in and only three bombers left while the anti-air team still has 24 remaining. The altitude limitation of 500 meters seemed to be too low, which made us think increasing the amount to 750 meters next round could possibly make the difference needed to make it harder for the SPAA team. And now down to the last F2222 as it attempts to drop its last load before finishing round one and leaving it to be a victory for the anti-air team. We now go into round two with same amount of participants but now curious as to how the 750 altitude difference might make it. Let's see how this turns out in our second round. Some altitude starting a little higher just at the beginning before they approach the battlefield to start to lower to their limitation of about 750 or lower. first drop having 52 kilograms of explosive mass per bomb and taking out 13 of the anti-air while three bombers have fallen, making it a pretty good start for the bomber side. Hilarious watching all the anti-air try and run while firing, making their accuracy drop and the bombs drop all around them. I didn't join the general chat when hosting the event with the other participants that wanted to chat during the battle, but I can only imagine what mess of commentary was being said on Discord. With all the bombs that were being dropped at the higher altitude, it seemed harder for some to hit such small targets, while even some decided to almost dive bomb toward their opponents. Five minutes in and only three bombers left and 13 SPAA left. It was interesting to see how the extra 250 meters of altitude was able to make a difference so far. Let's see how the rest finishes out. bomber left making it back to the runway to repair while the anti-air team tries to get back on their feet with only 10 left. With it not looking likely for the bomber team, another 250 meters will be given to their side if things don't pan out for them.
which it didn't, so we go into our last round before our bonus night round, making it so the bombers now have the altitude of flying up to a thousand meters. Can this be what it takes to protect them more from the showering array of ammo? Let's see how this round goes. from the anti-air not having as much an effect on the bombers being almost right over them to drop their bombs. have already knocked out 16 of the anti-air side, while only two bombers have fallen. Thunder showing a little lag on the anti-air's aiming, but was leading with their rounds the best they could. Anti-Air starting to make a comeback, there's only six of them left while three bombers remain. score to have left only two anti-air remaining with all bombers have fallen. This was a very close round. It was amazing to see the difference in what the altitude could do for them at these different heights. We now go into our round of chaos where we go into the same map but at night and allowing our participants to use any World War II bomber and dive bomber they wanted to at an altitude of a thousand meters and our anti-air team to use any cold wear or prior SPA they wanted. Enjoy this last crazy fireworks show.
battle only lasting just under six minutes due to tickets bleeding out. 32 bombers were lost while the anti-air team lost 53. Hope you all enjoyed this vid. Thank you to all my supporters and those that helped. You guys all stay cool and keep flying.